प्रभु तव मूर्ति विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जो गल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए नजर समी पे रहो अमारिए कंशाम महाराज निज हरिकृष्ण महाराज निज स्वामीनारायण भगवान निज सुप्रीम ऑल माइडी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our utmost dear Puja Guruji, Puja Santo, Puja Bhagatji, and all of you devotees, Jai Swami Narayan. As we continue to embark in the life of Sadhguru Muktanan Swami, every time we listen to to one of his prasangs, charitras, something new arises. Something new we find out about him. It may be a quality, a characteristic, or just how simple of a saint he was, yet how brilliantly great he was in the eyes of Sriji Maharaj and Nan Santo and the devotees of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Yet today, we want to take a look in his life on the glory of association and how much affection he possessed for God and his santos and his devotees. By showing us such kinds of prasangs in his life, we can try to mirror or at least come close to trying to develop somewhat the type of affection he had, maybe towards the end of our life. But Muktanan Swami is like the ocean. He can't be measured. He's like the sky. He's very vast and broad. Yet, if we pray to him, if we pray to Maharaj, Maybe we can touch a little bit on how much affection he really possessed in his life at the end of our life. But we must start here today to learn what kind of affection our, he had for Maharaj and his Santo and Bhakto. Swami Narayan Hare, the glory of association. Like the sunlight, Bhagwan Swami Narayan's glory spread all around. He initiated saints and devotees throughout Gujarat. Even those who visited from out of state were impressed by his divine brilliance. In result, many became attracted towards him. Many, even, many were even in initiated as sadhus who once were kings before. Bhagwan Swaminarayan currently had initiated 2,000 saints as his disciples. As Bhagwan Swaminarayan's glory, two hundred years start two hundred years ago starts to grow more and more. His fame, his attraction, because when Bhagwan comes on this earth, yes, he does take a form of a human bo human body, but his aura, his tej, his light, his luminosity. His attraction increases as he wishes. If he wishes to show miracles, by showing such kind of miracles or by just merely standing or sitting, whoever he wishes to take to his Akshardham, whoever he wishes to pull towards him, he does so merely easily. That proves that his Sarvoparipano, meaning his 
He is the supreme entity because no other avatars in the past has done such kind of feats. You know, the way to measure how great someone is is to compare those who are lower. When we figure out that this person has these kinds of characteristics and this person has these kinds of characteristics, if we're looking at in the worldly terms, and if I can put it into terms beyond, this God has performed this many charitras and has done this many works compared to this God who has done this much and this much. When we compare, we can see that there is a difference. To see that difference is very, very important because when we tend to find a difference, we can see that there is a high and a low. And that's when we can differentiate that Bhagwan Swami Narayan is supreme beyond all the other avatars because of his works, his charitras, his leelas, his qualities, his abode, the, 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 the extreme power he possesses. All these different kinds of qualities, when we look at them, we can see that the other avatars are, or I can't say down, but you can see that there's a difference, a high-low, definitely. So right now, as this prasang starts, Bhagwan Swamiyan had 2,000 sadhus in that time. How can that be possible? There's no sampradaya in that time where the Creator was present there at, at the time of the sampradaya that had initiated that many sadhus. Bhagwan Swamiyan only lived on this earth or stayed on this earth for 49 years, yet the works he did were beyond comprehension and yet yet till today no person or no other god or avatar or incarnation has matched any of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's feats. Now let's get into the story. Once upon a time Muktan Swami raised a version for a Hindustani sadhu who was violating saintly disciples and he felt that he should be disregarded from the satsang fellowship for the betterment of others. Now at that one time, Sadhguru Muktanan Swami, he was observing the sadhus that were initiated. There was 2,000 of them. One of them was a Hindustani saint, meaning he was from uh, Hindustan, a region in India, who was not, you can say, abiding by the rules and regulations of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So Muktan Swami saw, thought that if one rotten apple were to be put in a big batch, it would spoil totally all the rotten apples. So he decided to remove him. And he decided to present this to Bhagwan Swami Nare. So this consideration was not known to Bhagwan at that time. Sri Hari thought a great sadhu like Muktan Swami knows the glory of one who is in our association. He must try to remove one whose nature is not good and instead not remove him from his association. Meaning Bhagwan, what he wanted to, he wanted to remove that bad sadhu's nature instead of removing him completely from the satsang fellowship. Thinking so, to realize this and spread such a realization, Sri Hari ordered Muktan Swami to learn Sanskrit at the monastery called Ram Mahal in Dangadra. By the command of the Supreme Lord, Muktan Swami went to the village. He was very well familiar with the situation indicated by Sri Hari. When he was in search of a true guru, he had visited this place. Meaning Bhagwan Swami Nain commanded Muktan Swami to go and learn, learn the language of Sanskrit. Uh, the Sanskrit language is very difficult. It's known as the language of the gods. And it's spoken not only here on Murtyulok, but the realms beyond the demigods and the gods and even Bhagwan Swaminarayan speaks Sanskrit. 
in his divine abode. But not to worry if you don't know Sanskrit, if you only know Gujarati or English or another language. Bhagwan also can talk to you in whatever language you feel comfortable with because obviously he has made each and every language. But saying so, Muktan Swami was sent to learn at Ram Mahal. It's a big, you can say, a school type of a mansion uh, to learn the language of Sanskrit in the village of Dangadra. The evil spirits in saintly robes were intoxicated by drinking wine, speaking obscene words, and were concerned with attaining ultimate. Were not concerned with uh, attaining ultimate liberation. There were neither the talks of scriptures nor its disciplines. Those fake saints were only filling their stomach by the money given by innocent people and enjoying the sensual pleasures. It was their only aim. So there, Muktan Swami observed that he had to live in the middle of saints who had no dharamniyam, meaning no rules and regulations. They were drinking wine and were intoxicated always. They were speaking obscene words, meaning their life was not like a sadhu. It was completely like the worst people here in on earth you can imagine. Yet, they were in the clothes of sadhus. So they were hypocrites. They were showing one thing and they were doing another thing. And they were living off of other people's, you can say, wealth, which was something that Muktan Sani saw to be very wrong. In the, mid, in, in the middle of one of the sadhus, a group of sadhus, Muktan Swami says, who was pure and the embod embodiment of saintliness became extremely puzzled. Meaning, Muktan Swami, when he was standing there with the group of sadhus, he was puzzled to see that how could this be happening? It was difficult to pass even a moment there. He could hardly pass one week. He suffered heart-rendering separation from Sri Hari and the saints. Now we can see our main topic, Muktanan Swami's affection for Bhagwan and his saints. He suffered heart-rendering separation, meaning in Bhagwan Swami Narayan's Vachnamrut, Bhagwan himself says, A devotee with such total affection for God never has any thoughts other than those of God. The extent to which he harbors desires only then those of God is the extent to which he lacks in his affection. If whether knowingly or unknowingly, some thought other than remembering God's form were to arise in a person, who has true affection for God, it would be as distressful for him as someone throwing a handful of pebbles and sand into a very delicious meal he is eating, or as painful as being branded on his forehead by a red-hot branding iron. One who feels this way should be known to have affection for God. This is Garuda, 1st chapter 44, Vajshamrut. Bhagwan himself describes the real, you can say, meaning of affection for God is remembering his form, remembering Bhagwan, and any thought besides Bhagwan, meaning and his saint, occurs, true Ekantik Satpurush, occurs, any thought outside occurs, then it would be like, just imagine that, suppose your favorite food is pizza, and there was very, very small pebble like rocks thrown into your pizza. Not you can't see it, it's underneath the cheese. And suppose you start you take up one bite in it and you hear that sound. How would it feel? Even if you were hungry, you have not eaten for two days, just by taking a small bite, you'd feel completely distressing, you're completely letting go of that meal and taking something else or just not eating at all. Or imagine being branded in the, in the forehead with a branding iron. 
just like how here in the United States they have a, you can say a method of branding cows uh, for their number in the back and the backside and how that cow you, I've, I've seen it how that cow cries because of the pain in the same way if we are branded in the forehead by a branding iron imagine that pain in the same way a person who has affection for Bhagwan, his form if he has other thoughts beside that would feel pain in such a way not only that, but in the Vacham, Bhagwan states, instead one should develop affection towards God with blind faith. After all, affection developed by logically thinking of God's virtues cannot be trusted. Therefore, one should develop the same type of affection towards God as one has for one's bodily relations. This affection is known as affection due to blind faith. Kadada, 1st chapter 57. Muktanan Swami, he had known Bhagwan to be completely Bhagwan and no one else, yet he had blind faith as well. Puja Guruji describes, and he has done a katha on this, on regarding blind faith, faith that is blind. It doesn't ha have eyes, he says. If one's eyes open, then it's not faith. It's kind of, if I can give you an example, suppose there is a big brick wall right in front of you. And suppose that someone told you that there's a big diamond right behind the brick wall. Now, you know that the brick wall behind there is just a school. For example, a school building, nothing else. You've been passing it for years and years and you know that there is nothing but a school. You've even been inside of it too, beyond the brick wall. Yet yeah, someone comes and tells you, suppose a saint comes and tells you that there is a big diamond behind this brick wall. What do you believe him? You've been through this place years in and years out. And this saint, you don't even know his name, you don't know who he is, you don't know what kind of saint he is, nothing. You don't know any of his credentials. Yet, to believe him without question, without any thoughts, that's blind faith. That yes, there is a diamond behind this wall. In the same way, blind faith has no eyes. And... In that Katha, I remember Guruji says that a person with blind faith, no matter how much you can say, they have Iman, he may have, but Bhagwan will still take him to his Akshradham. He will release him from this body. That's how much faith works. That's how strong of an element faith is that Muktanan Swami possessed. But getting back to the topic at hand, the affection that he had because he was in such a group of people that were completely opposites to his liking, to his ruchi. He could not stand living there for even a moment. He could not stand being separated from Maharaj and his sadhus. He became so immersed in the thoughts of God and saints as to be entirely unaware of the world around him not even knowing if it was day or night. So what Muktan Swami did was he performed Antar Drashti, meaning he started to look inwards. He started to have more thoughts of Bhagwan in his saints that this saint has this great quality, this saint has this quality, Bhagwan is like this, Bhagwan is greater than beyond anyone, things like this. So then he, he could forget everything around him. It's kind of like... Um, if I can give you an example, suppose a, there's a businessman and he's performing a business and his business is going horrible. He is losing money left and right. So what he does is he comes home every day and to forget the pain of losing money, of not making a profit, and maybe even being bankrupt, he drinks alcohol. 
he drinks so much alcohol that for that, you can say one or two or three hours that he feels that intoxication in his mind, his body, he forgets that he is losing money. He forgets everything for that time. Then what happens? He goes to sleep. And then when he wakes up again, obviously it's back to normal. But in this case, to put it into perspective for you, Muktanand Swami had many, many thoughts of Bhagwan and, and, and sadhus. Due to that, he forgot the environment around him completely. He forgot it was even day or night. That's how much he was immersed in those thoughts. He would lament with dripping. He would, he would lament with crying. When will I be relieved from the ocean of misery? How can I live without Sri Hari and his saints? This company of Vairagis, meaning these fake sadhus, seems to be more painful than suffering of hell. Where shall I go to find true saints? Now, after that, there's this pad, this hymn, you can see even a kirtan, that every morning we sing. We don't know what it is, but we sing it. After Arti, after Dun, after we do Visve Sacho, we sing it. When we're doing Danwat Sapuja Guruji in the morning, Maravala Ji. Now, these, this, that kirtan has direct relation with this story because this is what happens. In that very moment, he composed a kirtan glorifying sadhus related to the manifest, manifest form of God. Maravalaji su valapadi sere. A devotee from that village came to Gadpur with this letter in the form of its composition. Muktan Swami, in the last line, requested to Sri Hari that it feels to me the company of evil men is more painful than the miseries of hell. Sri Hari read the letter and at once he sent a parsha to bring him back to Gadpur. Muktan Swami came in Gadpur and after having the darshan of Sri Hari and saints, he was very much delighted. Sri Hari asked about the situation in the, in the Ram Mahal. Muktan Swami revealed that he experienced what he experienced there was explained in the matter of in the kirtan. So the kirtan, the meaning of this kirtan, in short, is why would one give up the company of a saint who has only love for God? Only he should be worshipped with honor. If one continues to keep company of such a saint, despite having numerous obstacles, his soul will attain the supreme bliss in the abode of God. Though by living with saints, one is if one is put on a bed of thorns or if he has to face a barrage of insults by wicked people, he should not think to give up the company of saints. His nectar-like speech narrates the divine pastimes of God, meaning such a sadhu. The great demigods like Brahma want to offer their, you can say, prayers to such a saint. To see the face of wicked people is more painful to me than the sufferings of hell. Muktan Swami asks to keep him always in the association of God and his devotees. Finally, in the Vachnamur, Vartal 11th, Bhagwan himself, there were santos in, in Vartal there who Bhagwan requested them to sing this pad. And after he said that he he then gave a command to all satsangis to learn the two devotional songs and added, one should constantly sing these two devotional songs and remember their message, meaning Mara Valaji and Mara Hariji. These are two, uh, you can say, kirtans, hymns that were created. One was created by Muktan Swami, other was created by Narasimeta. And these remind us of the glory of a sadhu, and the other side, the glory of not having the company of an uh, of a satpurush, meaning uh, the company of an asatpurush. We should always remember, and that's why Puja Guruji has, in 
all of Loedam Parivars, you can say, uh, Niyam rituals in the morning has told each and every, you can say, devotee and everyone that they should sing these two buds. That's why when we do not, when we perform Nandwats uh, after Bhagwan, we when we're singing Maravalaji, we're singing the glory of such a sadhu. We perform, we are performing Nandwats Puja Guruji in that form. We're having that kind of bhavna. In the same way, Sadguru Muktanan Swami shows us that affection for Bhagwan is very important and how it should be. Nonetheless the greatness of association is even more important in one's life. Due to association, one can develop affection for God. Without association, no one can develop, meaning without good association of an ekantik satpurush, no one can develop affection for Bhagwan. Saying this, my humble Jai Swami Narayan.